Hello, this is a shortlisted problem, which means it was proposed to appear in the International Math Olympiad competition, but it didn't quite make it there. This is a combinatorics problem, and this is uh, problem C1. Let S be an infinite set of positive integers such that there exists four pairwise distinct A, B, C, D in S with GCD of A, B is not the same as GCD of C, D. Prove that there exist three pairwise distinct x, y, z such that GCD of x, y is the same as GCD of y and z, but it's not the same as GCD of z and x. The first thing that came to my mind when I looked at this problem was the fact that it says it's an infinite set. So somehow I need to use the fact that it's an infinite set. And one way of using that fact is to use pigeonhole principle. What does that mean? It means something has finitely many possibilities and because we have infinitely many numbers infinitely many of those must have that certain possibility so here is now what i did so i looked at a and took the gcd of a with everything in s so look at all of these numbers now every one of these numbers divides a which means there's only finitely many possibilities for this. So what does that mean? It means there are infinitely many of these S's that the GCD of A and S are all the same. So it means there is a subset A of S. Since I want to come up with distinct integers, I'm going to exclude A, B, C, D from this set such that GCD of A and X is the same as GCD of a and Y for every X and Y in this set A. Now I was hoping to use this and come up with more GCDs that are equal and then somehow show that there are three numbers that satisfy that property. So what I thought is since we're trying to prove the existence of three numbers with some certain property, I'm going to assume that there aren't any three numbers satisfying this and that would give me some condition. So let's do proof by contradiction. So on the contrary, assume there is no such triple x, y, z uh, with GCD of x, y equals GCD of y, z, but not the same as GCD of x, z. So let's assume that's the case. So now that tells me that, so because these two are the same and I'm using proof by contradiction, the third one must also be the same. So GCD of x and y, must be the same as GCD of A and X and must be the same as GCD of A and Y if X is not the same as Y. Now I'm going to use the same thing for B. I'll repeat the exact same argument for B, but I would like to keep the same condition for GCD of AX equals GCD of AY. So instead of repeating this process for S, I'm going to repeat this process for A. So similar to above, there is <clears throat> and and just uh, to make sure this set a is an infinite set there is an infinite set b inside a such that for every x and y in b gcd of b and x is the same as gcd of b and y so what this means again because of the condition that we had gcd of x and y must be the same thing the same thing as GCD of B and X and GCD of B and Y. Now let's see what happened here if X and Y uh, are distinct. Okay, so now let's see what happened. So, so far we have GCD of A and X is equal to GCD of A and Y is equal to GCD of X and Y. We also know GCD of B and X is the same as GCD of B and Y, and that's the same thing as GCD of X and Y. And this one is GCD. Okay, so this means I have GCD of A and X is the same as GCD of B and X. A, X, and B are distinct, so that means GCD of A and B must be the same as GCD of A and X. So this tells us GCD of A and B is the same as GCD of, because GCD of A and X is the same as GCD of X and Y, is the same as GCD of X and Y for every X, Y in B with 
x not equal to y. Now we're almost there. We're going to repeat the same thing. So repeat the same argument. So we find a subset there is an infinite subset C of B such that GCD of C and X is equal to GCD of C and Y for every X and Y in C. And then again repeat the same process, repeat the same argument again. There is an infinite subset D of C such that GCD of D and X is equal to GCD of D and Y for again every X and Y in D. So from here we obtain that GCD of C and D by the exact same argument must be the same as GCD of X and Y for every X, Y in D where X and Y are distinct. And this means GCD of A and B and GCD of C and D must be in fact the same, which is a contradiction. If you like this video, I have plenty other videos like this on my channel. Make sure to check those out. If you have any suggestions or problems, feel free to send them to me at mathcompetitioncoach at gmail.com and I will see you in another video.